you have a flat spot, first thing you do is mess with the nozzle. And it's not, it probably won't fix it. I've seen cars run perfectly with this thing plugged up completely. Dual port engine stock. Now, typically when you have a flat spot, when you go like this, just a little ways, what happens is as soon as you've done this, you get gas squirting out of this. And then when you stop moving this, gas stops moving out of this. And that's why when you first do move this, just this bit, like half, an inch or so, half inch, the engine speeds up because of this gas. And if you hold this in this position, the thing will start missing and cutting out and they'll just die because there's not enough gas coming through the idle circuit that feeds the ports at the, at the throttle flap that incremental, incrementally increase the fuel to the engine. Um, now the main jet, it feeds the spray bar. So if you hold the, the hold the throttle open to about 1500 RPM, you'll see you'll see gasoline coming out of this in a mist. So how are you going to make yourself get more gasoline at these ports? How are you going to do that? Well, you can put a bigger pilot jet in it, but it probably won't be enough. What you're going to need to do is drill this hole out to two millimeters. This is this is a, a dual port carburetor right here. This is a like this looks just like a seventy. If you have one that's got these like this, and it's German, that's a seventy only carburetor. Now this is a dual port carburetor, and this is the same thing. We got two jets. This is an auxiliary idle jet, and this is for the main part of this is for the pilot jet the guy that does the, the one that's here this has got a plug and a little tiny jet don't take the jet out just leave it alone if you blow it out do not do it don't do it it's too small to touch this is the air correct so this is the air correction jet for the idle jet for the pilot jet and this is the uh, air correction jet for the main jet so basically the between this and the main jet it's basically like the letter y so the, the two top parts of the Y, one side's for air and the other one's for gas, and then they mix inside here with the emulsion tube. See, that guy with these holes, I don't know anything about that. I just don't mess with it. Um, this will come off, though. If you ever need a, an air correction, Jeff, or something else, this one will come off. It'll just twist off of that little tube. So if you look at an engine and you give it gas and you get it to about 1,500 RPM, you'll start seeing fuel out of here. And so you, you've gone past the region of this movement to where it's dependent on the pilot jet. Because if there's nothing coming out of here at any given RPM, then the only thing you've got is the pilot jet. Of course, like I showed you on the, car, on the carb on the car, when you crack this, the nozzle squirts, then as soon as you stop moving, it stops squirting, then the thing wants to die because there's not enough fuel coming through here. So if you put like about a 70 or a 75 pilot jet in this and and a two and make this two millimeters that'll probably fix your flat spot but remember this you, you, this again if you plug this up you get just gas and if you plug that up you just get air but this works a little different because in the set well it does work the same way I'm not an engineer though but when you make this jet bigger like a lot of guys will put a bigger jet in it usually doesn't do anything it doesn't make any difference because you have to give it more air because of the ratio, the, the combustion ratio is 14 point something to one. And so if you make this bigger, you got to make this bigger. But with more air coming in, you're, you're, you're going to get more volume of mixture coming out of these guys, coming out of the, uh, the ports. Where'd they go? Which side are they out? I keep forgetting them over here, these guys. And so you've got to get a mist coming out of these that's denser than the mist before you change the pilot jet, making it bigger and making that air correction jet bigger. There is one caveat here. See, on e whether it's dual port or single, this is the, the speed screw. So, well, first of all, when you put the pilot jet in that's right, what will happen is if you screw this all the way in, it'll die. 
And if you screw it all the way out, keep going and keep, you got a smooth, it's a matter, it matter, imagine it's all the way in. And you screw it out a little, now you got a real smooth idle. So it's, high, it's the highest speed you can obtain by moving the screw. And then you keep backing it off to richer, it should change again. And that means the pilot jet is of a size where you can adjust it too lean and backing it off will adjust it too rich. And so it's in somewhere in between there. If you put one on that doesn't really, I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. You want to have a range where you can go, you know, bad lean, bad rich, just right in between. But anyway, on a German one, because the car one is new on dual, all dual ports, except for automatic stick, I think, they had a, um, they had vacuum advance and retard distributor. So, if you have a car that's set at, say, you know, when the car is a 74 bug, brand new, it's set at 5 degrees retarded. And you set the timing to 10 degrees, the idle will go up. You can easily do it simply by removing the retard hose. Instantaneously, the idle speed will go up, and you'll see the timing jump, like from 5 degrees retarded, to 10 degrees advance. It's gonna change a lot. And the idle speed goes up, so you go, well, I wanna leave it that way. So you start screwing this screw in to lower the idle, it'll just bottom out. And so when you do this and do what you're gonna do here with the, the, the jetting and so forth, if this thing screws in all the way and you still can't get the idle where you want it, you're gonna to have to get a Brazilian one. Because a, a Brazilian one, like for instance this, will always allow you to adjust this. It'll never bottom out when it's at 10 degrees. Um, now, as far as the nozzle goes, watch. See it? You want to hit this. Now, that way it's at, see, the books will tell you to point the stream, which is unatomized, at the opening of the crack as it, as it initiates opening as you're doing this when you're checking it. Well, that's implying that the fuel is going to come through that flap into the stream because you don't want it to hit the side. You're going to try, you don't even want to hit the side of this wall, really. You want it to be in air. Well, if it does atomize, after it gets past the opening in the flap, it's going to atomize in the manifold. But when you do this, you're pre atomizing it. So it's just like the spray bar fuel. This thing you'll see mist coming out of it at about 1500 RPM. And so you're just adding to it. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? And so now it's atomized just like this fuel before it even goes through the flap. So you're pre-atomizing it. So combined with a combining, aiming this in the right place and making this two millimeters bigger and put a bigger polish in it, that'll fix your flat spot. And one, there is one caveat. Um, if you're having a lot of problems with running and stuff, this has happened sometimes. It won't give you a flat spot, but things not right. Sometimes the valve springs are weak in the, I've, I've seen uh, one engine where they were like 20 or 30 pounds below what they were supposed to be. And um, there's a tool that you can take them off without taking the head off or anything and do it while it's in the car. And if you're having headaches with not necessarily this, it doesn't hurt to check the valve springs. Most guys don't do it. They'll just put them back on the engine, but it's nice to know what they are because they're supposed to be 120 or to 135 or something. And that particular car was like 90. I think it was 90 pounds. It was ter and all of them, all eight of them were like that. And the other thing is, is everybody checks the compression and thinks, hey, it's fine, but you should always do a leak down test. Um, that way you know, the, the, when you do a leak down test, just forget the gauges. What you're gonna do is connect it and have your cylinder pressurized and you put your ear right here. Just listen, and if you hear air here, or if you hear it here, if you hear it here, leaky intake valve. If you hear it here, leaky exhaust valve. So, and if you, you're gonna hear it, if you take the, this off, you're gonna hear, every cylinder will sound the same, the leak that you will hear through the ring gaps. So if you're concerned, I mean, you're gonna hear it, every car's got ring gaps. So you're gonna hear air coming through here when you take the oil cap off, and all cylinders will sound the same, unless one's got a broken ring. Broken rings are pretty unusual. 
They usually happen, if they're going to happen, is during assembly because it's easy to they're really, every time I put a cylinder on a, on a piston, I'm thinking, I hope I didn't break a ring. You know, you do the best you can. I, I put a lot of WD-40 on it when I do that. That's how I put them on. But that's how you fix the flat spot. And don't forget what I said about the German carburetor. being not Maybe you might not get this thing. You might screw it all the way in. If you screw it all the way in, you're changing the mixture anyway. It's got to have this. This has got to be open. Maybe at least a couple turns to where you got it right. Um, which you, the ideally, with a perfect, re, perfectly jetted carburetor, you can take this thing off and cut the end off, cut the plunger off and put it on, no wire needed, and back the choke the, all the way off so that you don't have any extra, all these, ex, you know, you, you have the stupid wires here. Who wants more? The more wires, the worse. You don't need an electric jet here, even if it has one. Just put one of these things in it. Because what happens is the electric jet, they're heavy. And so you can tighten them, but because of their weight, they try to come loose. And then they ovalize this hole. So that's another thing to notice on the carburetor you're using, because if the hole's really ovalized, then it's not going to seal well out here. And you're going to pull air in through this. The other thing is, is sometimes these have inserts in them. Well, I... The last time I saw one with an insert, I was having trouble with this thing idling, and I realized that the tip of the mix of the pilot jet screw was not mating with the bottom of the hole. Now you look at the end of this thing. See how it's tip? You know what that's just like? If you've ever connected a gas line to a gas stove, this is the same kind of fitting. So when you put this thing in, a screwdriver might not be enough. I always use an 8 millimeter because you want to know that this tip is perfectly mated to the seat down inside that hole. And that's about all I know, you know, but this, this will fix it. And um, let me say one more thing. What's interesting to note is like, is f first of all, this spray, spray pattern I've got here that I told you you should use, I, I had the opportunity to look at a bug with 6,000 miles on it in about 1980. And we were having problems with this back then. And I asked the guy, can I take the air cleaner off? I want to look. And I looked and it was just like that. That's how, they, that's how VW did it. I don't know why they tell you so forth in the book, but this will work. And that's how that car came. Um, there was another one. It was a 73 bus. The guy bought it, and it had Weber's on it, dual throats on each side. It was a stock engine. And so eight miles to a gallon in town, so that was not working. They ran really good. Weber's will work on anything. That's because they have that extra Venturi in the middle. You know, when I'm talking about a dual throat Weber, it's got that little extra Venturi. That's what really gets pulls the fuel. That's why they never have flat spots. I imagine they do once in a while. Now, but there's another reason for a flat spot. The book tells you to measure this. What I do, like on a Type 4 carburetor, 72 bus or a square back, you can be working on the carb and you want to check this. You put gas in here and you push this thing down like that and you watch the spray and you can count 1,001, 1,002. Don't do it like that. You know, 1,001 is enough. That's about what this has. Um, I've seen cars run with this thing plugged up perfectly. I mean, in other words, this nozzle doesn't do anything and the car runs fine on a dual port car. But so really the, the hesitation is more dependent on the idle circuit than anything. But the point I was trying to say, I put, it was a 72 bus carb setup. In other words, short manifolds, oil bath, air cleaner. 73 and four had a plastic air cleaner and taller manifolds, but pretty much the same thing. And I just liked 72 because it's got an oil bath air cleaner, so I put that on a 73. And that was in about 2013. So he's been driving. I built another motor for it because about a year later, it, blew, it dropped a valve seat. Type 4 engine, rebuilt head, valve seat came loose. It had a Type 4, it had a, a, a 412 engine in it, I think, from a manual. Um, it had a needle bearing in the middle of the flywheel. And... Uh, there were other reasons to think that it was because it had dome pistons. Basically the same thing as a 914. I'm pretty sure they're identical. Like a, 70, a 1970 914 
and I think they had 411s and 70, it would have um, the, the same, the same everything. 914s are basically bus engines with dome pistons, okay? The first couple years, that, that was it. Everything else is pretty much the same. Maybe the cam, it's very hard to find out exact information on that. But the thing was, is he drove that car for about 10 years, and then one day it started acting like it had a plugged up fuel filter. In other words, you get up to about 25 or 30, maybe in a second, it starts missing like crazy, or maybe even 25, and then next gear would do the same thing, and I thought, well, a fuel pump or the filter. Well, it wasn't. It was the air correction jet, so this is the point. When the, car, when the cars were put on it for like 10 years, it ran fine, and then one day it didn't, and it wasn't anything. It was this. So I put a smaller one in it, both sides. Um, some of these, like in a square bat, now remember that was dual port, you know, type four carburetor, type three carburetor, pretty much the same thing. So things change. So that's why, who knows what it is, but one, when the car was new, no flat spot, then one day, flat spot. Who knows what happened? And the explanation falls under the same category as why would a car running fine for 10 years suddenly need the air correction jets changed? Something changed in the motor. The car runs fine. Nobody checked the compression on it. But he drives it like 100 miles every day, that thing. So there you go. That's how you fix the flat spot, though.